Joining us now from Stanford, Connecticut is Haley Wolf of Rockdale Security. She follows the ski industry. Hey, Haley, we, we learned today that March 1st is the new deadline here uh, for Fortress to, to sort of figure out how it's going to meet this payment uh, on Whistler. Tell me, what have we learned about this, this second delay? Well, it appears that there have been multiple extensions, and now, as you said, it's March 1st is the, the next date before they auction the assets. It tells me that, you know, Fortress and the creditors are, are in discussions negotiating a solution to this problem. So you don't see, as we just mentioned in the introduction to you, do you or do you not see an auctioning off of some of the other assets that, that Fortress owns or that IntraWest holds on to, the other ski mountains? I don't, I don't believe it's in anyone's best interest to auction these assets off right now. I mean, first of all, you're moving into the sweet, you're now in the sweet spot of their cash flow generation period. You're coming off of depressed EBITDA. There aren't a lot of buyers out there, so multiples are still depressed, and it's difficult to get financing. So it's not the opportune time to sell these assets. So tell me, you were just talking about uh, this being sort of peak time in some ways for the mountain. How did Fortress end up in this financial difficulty if, as in your recent report, uh, at Whistler you're getting, what, 100 Canadian dollars per visit per day from people hitting the mountain? Well, that's my estimate in terms of what the numbers that Whistler does revenue per visit day on their 2 million visits. You know, I think it gets back to, you know, when Fortress acquired these assets, they paid about 11 or so times EBITDA. And IntraWest had a lot of their business concentrated in real estate development. They had a template whereby they would build these condo hotels, and they had about 18,000 units in potential development, and they'd sell about 1,500 a year. But as they built these, these units, they ran up a lot of debt and they were not free cash flow positive. So when Fortress bought them, they bought them on this cash flow stream that would come when they sold these real estate units and then the second home real estate market dried up. Mm -hmm. So the rumor was that perhaps Vail would be interested. Do you see any progress there? Well, you know, it gets back to what I said earlier on the probability of whether these assets get sold or not. If Whistler were to be sold, I think Vail would absolutely be interested in buying Whistler. Now, this is an industry with enormous scarcity value. There may be 20 premier resort properties in North America. Vail owns five of them. It's not often that you see a marquee asset get put up for sale in the ski industry. So by all means, we would expect Vail to be a bid on, bidding on it and we'd be disappointed if they weren't. So the conversations that you think are happening are more having to do with it, with changing on, on payment schedules and the like in terms of what's motivating this, this March 1st delay. I, I think there are probably multiple discussions going on and I think there are people that are there, you know, hoping that the assets get sold.